What is up you guys? The 2022 NBA trade deadline is right around the corner and at least as of me recording this, not a lot has happened. But I have a feeling the dominoes are about to start falling any day now. One of those teams with said dominoes are the Indiana Pacers who for now 4 years have been trying and struggling to make the pairing of DeMontis Sabonis and Miles Turner work. These are two very good 25 year olds who bring something unique to the court. Turner is an elite rim protector who rivals the likes of Rudy Gobert, and Sabonis is one of the best offensive big men in the league, plus he is an elite rebounder. Having them both sounds like a luxury, but given that they both are true centers, you start to see why this has not worked out. Of all the double positions to have on the court, I think it is clear that two centers tends to not work. They simply just get in each other's way. Both Turner and Sabonis play better, and the team has more success when only one of them is on the floor. This is why myself and many others have been preaching for a trade in Indiana for quite a while. Though a lot of people think Turner is the easier option to move mid-season, given that he is a role guy who does not demand the ball, Unfortunately, he is currently injured, so the likelihood of him getting moved is a lot lower. Sabonis is the better player, but it is hard to find a team whose one piece they are looking for is a ball dominant center who can average over 20 a night. If that is what your team needs, then you probably are not really that good of a team. Either way, I have come up with 5 trades that make sense to me and I can hopefully explain in such a way to make sense to you. Before we get started though, please like the video, comment where you think Sabonis will end up after trade deadline day, and subscribe if you like basketball content. Now, let's get started. The first deal I have sees Sabonis headed to the Portland Trailblazers in exchange for Yusuf Nurkic, Anthony Simons, and Nasir Little, plus a draft pick or two. The Blazers have had a less than stellar year, and a lot of people have been arguing they need to blow up their roster and start over, but I think at this point, the front office has made it abundantly clear that both Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum are off the table in trade talks. Therefore, the only option is to double down and improve what the team already has. Sabonis would be the third offensive piece that the team has been lacking, especially with both of their stars dealing with injuries this year. I don't necessarily like this move for Portland because it puts all of their eggs into a basket that is already teetering on the edge, plus the team without much youth would be getting older, and their defense would seemingly become an even bigger issue, especially on the inside. But if this is the direction their front office wants to go to appease Lillard, my apologies to Blazers fans, but you're in for some bad years of basketball. Meanwhile, Indiana does not walk away with a ton, but I think that is okay. Simons and Little are two young players who have been showing promise this year. The Pacers are not necessarily rebuilding, rather they are retooling on the younger side. This would give them what they need. And Nurkic is an oddball piece here, his contract this season is not guaranteed, therefore I believe that means the Pacers could simply waive him if they choose to do so, or they could try to flip him for something else, or they could let him play out the season since Turner is injured anyways, and then make a decision on what to do with him in the offseason. Either way, I'm not necessarily a big fan of this move for either team, but it's one of the five best moves I could come up with. The next move I have sees Sabonis joining the New York Knicks in exchange for Kemba Walker, RJ Barrett, and Mitchell Robinson. This seems like a more even trade if you ask me. Sabonis in New York would be a big deal. The team has been playing sub 500 basketball this year, but still finds themselves competing for a play-in spot. Julius Randle has not looked like a star this year, and to me it seems apparent that he needs a number one option to play alongside. The team has guards and wings, what they lack is a center who can do something with the ball in his hands. Robinson and Nerlens Noel are pretty useless outside of two feet from the rim. For Indiana, this haul is pretty useful. RJ Barrett is a 21 year old scoring guard who has shown signs that he can create his own looks but does play better with a competent point guard like Malcolm Brogdon. Now you may think it is premature to move on from Barrett since he is only two and a half years into his lottery pick career. 
but in my opinion, they should move on him while his value is still high. 21 years old with promise is more valuable than a 22 year old or a 23 year old with promise. Robinson is a good swap for Indiana's center position. Obviously, Turner would resume the starting position upon his return, but Robinson gives them something to use in the meantime. Plus, given that he is on an expiring contract, they could use this as an extended tryout for next year as they pick their backup center of the future. And Walker has really fallen off, there's no denying that. But as a veteran who can shoot the long ball on a modest contract, I think he is a perfectly fine addition. This deal isn't great, but it's much better than the previous one. My third idea sees Sabonis joining the Sacramento Kings in exchange for Marvin Bagley, Davion Mitchell, and Alex Len, plus a couple draft picks. This move is very similar to the Portland trade in Logic. I do not think this is the direction the Kings should go. They are a perpetually bad team who, unfortunately, would be better blowing it up for the 100th time this decade and a half. But understandably, their higher ups are getting tired of starting over. They are attempting to make a move around the edges to put them into the play in game, and perhaps the bonus could be just that. De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton are two young guards who would undoubtedly benefit from the gravity Sabonis provides. Plus, the rest of their rotation are win-now guys. They are a pretty good team on paper. I do want to mention how funny it is that Sacramento currently has five centers on their roster, which is overkill. Uh, so, Len being involved in his trade is simply just to reduce that number slightly so that Sabonis makes a little more sense for him. For Indiana, Begley and Mitchell are two young players who have shown flashes and have a lot of room to grow, but at the end of the day, I don't like this move. Sabonis is an all-star. You are not getting that in return. Now perhaps you're trying to say that down the road, Begley or Mitchell can become an all-star, but I don't think that's very likely. I'm not too much of a fan of this trade. My fourth trade idea has Sabonis headed to the Washington Wizards in exchange for Thomas Bryant, Rui Achimura, and Denny Avdia. The Wizards started out the season a pretty good team, but have really fallen off as the season progresses, yet they still find themselves in the play-in hunt. They have a lot of firepower, but their center spot is a weak one. Montrez Harrell is a fun six-man option, but as a starter, he simply cannot compete with bigger, stronger centers, especially on the defensive end. Daniel Gafford is a promising young player, but let me remind you that he is 23 years old and averages 9 points a game. Sabonis is 25 and averages 19 a game currently. As a team competing for a playoff spot, you have to take the better option even if you think that down the road one might end up being slightly better, even though in this case I don't necessarily think that's true. Of course, thanks to Gafford's defense, I would run him as the backup center and move Harrell to the seldom used third spot in the rotation, which is quite the luxury to have as a, a center rotation for Washington, but I would definitely understand if Harrell's not too happy about this. For Indiana, they'd be receiving promising players who have potential, but they're just not currently being used in Washington. Thomas Bryant was for a short while a very intriguing stretch five, but injuries have taken him off the court for over a year. A change in scenery may be just what he needs to get back on track and potentially earn a spot in Indiana as the backup five of the future. Achimura and Avdia are in a similar boat to one another. Both are very recent lottery picks who have the foundation of a valuable contributor in the future, but both have a lot of room to improve if they want to come close to equaling the value of Sabonis. If I am Indy, I would in fact take a risk on this and make this move. And for my final trade idea, I have Sabonis going to the Charlotte Hornets in exchange for Kelly Oubre, PJ Washington, and Nick Richards. Charlotte needs to improve their center position right now if they want to make the play-in games. Mason Plumlee is not good enough to compete with just about any starting center in the league, and beyond him, they practically have no other options at the 5. Sabonis gives them a 20-piece every night who will rebound with the best of them and at least be a stronger body to get in the way of the other team's bigs. Charlotte fans would love to add Sabonis because they already have a fun team. 
They just need to win more games to justify keeping certain pieces together. For Indiana, you get to remain a competitive team with this move more so than any of the other ones previously mentioned. Oubre is a win now roll guy that any and every team would love to have. And with TJ Warren always being out with injuries, he would immediately fill in this role. Washington, meanwhile, I think would be a under the radar big time addition because the other need Indiana has always had is a power forward, a true power forward, which is exactly what he is. And with Nick Richards, he's nothing but a salary matcher. I'm not really convinced he really is an NBA player, unfortunately. I really do like this move for both sides. Indiana wants to retool and add youth, which is exactly what they'd be doing by adding PJ Washington and Kelly Oubre. And Charlotte wants a center who can help them win right now. So there you have it, my five possible trade ideas for DeMontis Sabonis. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like the video if you have not already. And subscribe for more basketball content. I will see you all next time.